Hello and welcome to this quick video where we are going to sum up the lessons that we have learned going through these basic examples of easy answer set programming. Then at the beginning of this uh, introduction, uh, I told you that ECASP has two main contributions. The first one is that it provides us with an easy way to understand logic programs and their answer sets. And the second one was that it provides us with an easy recommendation on how to write logic programs. Now, about the first one, about this easy understanding of logic programs and the answer sets, we have this idea that we, that we found going through these examples, that the answer sets of an easy logic program are the result of applying the rules in order, and this we have seen it going through too, right? And in the later slides, we will see what is recursion and how we have to extend this to handle recursion. But so far, don't worry about that. We are just considering programs without recursion. This is what we are seeing in the example. So let's keep this idea in mind. The answer sets of a logic program are the result of applying its rules in order. Now, of course, if we say we are talking about applying its rules, we have to say or at least we need to have an idea of what is to apply the rules. So we have seen that the application of the choice, the normal and the constraint rules generates, extends and eliminates the answer set respectively. No? So whenever the condition of a rule holds, if it's a choice rule, it may generate new answer sets. If it's a normal rule, what we are doing then is we may add new elements to that answer set. And if the condition hold and it's a constraint rule, what we are doing is we are deleting, eliminating that answer set. Good, then the other thing that appears here is what, what does it mean that the rules are applied in order? And we have said this before, that a rule is applied in order if for every atom in its body, there are no rules with that atom in the head left to be applied, right? There are no rules with that atom in the head that they still have to be applied or doing it, saying it the other way around, all the rules with that atom in the head have already been applied, right? Good, so this was for this easy understanding. Now, the very easy recommendation that more or less follows from this understanding is, look, then why don't you just write the rules in order? Because then it's very easy. You will get an easy understanding of the logic programs and then it will be easier to communicate the logic programs and also to maintain them, right? And then what you can say is, well, if the program is in order, then the answer set is as the result of applying the rules the way they are written because they are in order, okay? And also, actually, this is the natural way to write things. And people that are not aware at all about this methodology are writing logic programs in this manner because this is the natural way when you describe things like that. When you describe a problem or when you tell how to build a set, this looks like something natural. And more specifically, here what happens is that if we are going to say that an atom A depends on some other atoms, well, it makes sense that first we talk about these other atoms before we start talking about this atom A that depends on them. Right. So then this was all I wanted to tell you in this quick summary of this first section on basic examples. So stay tuned and see you in another video. Ciao.